Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This week, we're going to talk about a new generic gallery, the tournaments we played this last week, and of course, dive into the community section. This is episode 336 of Dial H for Hero Clicks. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. As always, joining me in the studio is my co-host, Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Too much. Too much Calder. There's all these pheasants. Too much. All There's these a lot. people plucking them. I don't understand. <laughs> it's, it's terrifying me, though. I'm going to let people be confused by that. I'm not even going to justify that with the response. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sure that'll go in some end of the year blooper reel, though. And uh, people will get it then or forget about it. Either way, patron, as always, it might go on or if you're a patron. before uh, the end of the year. <laughs> before this episode is done. Simeon's already cutting and splicing. Who knows? Um, yeah, we always start the week off with what made us happy. So, Simeon, what made you happy this week, my man? What made me happy this week was I finally got caught up on some like fairly old movies that I haven't watched, but I was I was like I really want to watch that when I saw the trailer back in 2015 and then just slipped my mind and uh I finally got around to like catching up on some movies this week had a pretty relaxing week as far as uh work and responsibilities go um And I think Adam would be sad if I didn't say that the Sets Appeal tournament made me happy. So I'll say that also made me happy. That was a fun tournament to watch and uh, participate in. Right on. I will will concur with that. I do wish we went a little farther in the tournament. But we're going to mention that in our our little tournament segment here anyways. Uh, What made me happy this week was uh, certainly not work. It uh, kicked me left, right, and sideways. But... Uh, I finally got a pre-order from Hasbro Pulse that I made in like May or whatever for this new uh, War Machine action figure. And it is amazing. It is a classic comic book, very uh, 80s War Machine. And I love it. War Machine is just, he's a thousand times better and cooler than Iron Man always and forever. He's got a big old Gatlin gun on his shoulder. This action figure is just beautiful, by the way. Like as far as Marvel Legends go, it's probably my Marvel Legend of the Year for like accessories, poseability. It has pretty much the basic Marvel Legend poseability, but all the the flying effect that it comes with, and then the ability to remove those to just have the boot effects. So if you put them on a stand, it'll have flight effects coming out the bottom of his shoes. And then like the missile launcher has like missiles coming out of it with a little explosion and the missiles themselves come off the little explosion. And it's very much a, a retro remake of the old classic war machine figure, which was already so awesome. The toy biz war machine. So not to turn this into a action figure review podcast, but I highly recommend, you know, for like a $35, I think it ended up being straight up 40 bucks with shipping or whatever it was when I, uh, when I bought the figure back in March or May or whenever, who knows, months ago, long time ago. It was a pre-order, so whatever. But it's just an amazing figure. It's so it's just so dope. It looks clean, it's solid. It has little bits of marbling, marbling for the silver. I just like it. I like it a lot. So yeah, nope. Thing that made me happy this week was getting a toy in the mail. So here we are, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Here we are. Well, I saw a post the other let's day just get right in. Asked if it was okay to still be playing with toys when you're like 25 plus. And I was like, well, I, I don't mm-hmm. really classify hero clicks as toys, but I think to like the general populace, it would be the same thing. If like I went up to a random person in the street yeah. that didn't play like tabletop stuff. And I was like, Hey, I play with these. They'd be like, cool. You play with toys. So I'm going to, I'm going to vote on wherever that post was. I don't have any clue. I don't remember, but I'm going to vote yes. It's fine because otherwise I'm. uh, You have to justify it. Yeah. Otherwise I have to, like, you know, so dog on myself. Hey, there's no room in this world for self hate. 
That's just not right. That just ain't right, boy. Boy, that just ain't right. I'll tell you what. So, like, fun story about, like, a real interaction I had with somebody with, like, a normal person. You know, sorry, Heroclix players. Um, when I was, like, it was earlier this year, I think in February, I went to the doctor's office, and I had an appointment at, like, 7.30 in Sioux Falls, and I was, like, 7.30 a.m. And so, I, like, I wake up at 5 a.m., drive to Sioux Falls, get there right-ish on time, and I'm like, what am I going to do to kill time until Hero clicks? That's at 5 p.m., you know, 5.30 p.m. And I'm like, man, I, that's a long day. You know, it's 7 o'clock. I get out of the doctor's office, you know, hour and a half later or ish, right? So it's 9 o'clock. So in my head, I'm like, I have eight hours to kill. Like, what am I going to do for eight hours? All I've got is like me and my car in Sioux Falls. And I guess I could drive around or, you know, sleep in my car for a little bit. Or something you know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and just like kill time go to like the mall or something but i didn't want to do that so i decided uh i was gonna see how hard it would be to become an uber driver and it's not or no it wasn't uber it was lyft um so i watched all of the tutorials got all of that done within like an hour they were super quick about sending all this like stuff back and i just drove for lyft for like that entire day and in my car i keep three hero clicks figures and I rotate them out every once in a while. So I think at this time they were all Leonardo or something like different versions of Leonardo, like black and white digital, terrible Leonardo, or just like a normal Leonardo. And this lady in my car for one of the rides goes, Oh, what are those little toys you have? And I'm like, actually they go to a board game. And then I just started talking about hero clicks and uh, I did not safe to say I did not receive a tip for that uh, that that specific ride. But yeah, I was just bored and I was like, let's just do it. Let's have fun. Like, what else am I going to do? Make some money. I think I only made like 50 bucks, though, like an entire day. And I made like $50 and it was. Yeah, that was that's a little rough. Keep, that's that why was a little I keep rough. a pile of bones in my car. People don't ask questions <laughs> about bones. No one's like, what do you do with all those bones? Jesus. You don't you don't ever get that question. Well, not from passengers. Maybe from the law. Uh, the law. I think we've entered into a realm of the show where we should start talking about anything else. So there was news this week. Sort of not really. Uh, an article came out, sort of not really, like I said, that was talking about, sorry, I almost said intraset, intraset, but that is wrong. Isn't that right, Simeon? There is no intraset, yeah. interset, or it took outer Wizkids set. About, I want to say, over a week to mm. change two phrases out. Apparently, they don't have the, like, find word for, like, tool in their, their toolbox. Because, yeah, it took them quite a while, and again, I can't uh, reference the previous article. It was locked, and I didn't save any of it before we got locked. But from what I could tell and what I remembered, they hadn't. They literally didn't change anything other than those two terms got swapped out for uh, more, more interesting terms, or less interesting terms, I guess. It would be what, like, a... Uh, I don't know, a normal human would call these things, and that's things that are mm. inside of a set and things that work outside of a set. Uh, so yeah, they, they got weird vernacular, and they got rid of the vernacular that they were using, or trying to use, I guess. But yeah, that article's back up and ready to read, if you really need to know that uh, sometimes they make things that work only in sets, and sometimes they make things that work outside of sets. I guess that's a thing they had. Do to you have to like uh, the entire undead set, where it's we never make anything else ever, and we give two characters a named keyword, and that is that is pretty much it. In the case of zombies, I guess there are three people. Same with ghosts, but like werewolf pack. Can't wait to play my werewolf. I mean, to be fair, one is a generic, and I guess one is also just a generic, but it's an alpha. Alpha male werewolf generic of the pack. So, 
Like that entire set is basically like, eh, it exists. Same thing with um, the headmaster trait from X Men Xavier School. Even though, even though they've made plenty of X Men sets and they're making new headmasters, they decided that is a trait that will live and die with this set. And that is all, ladies and gentlemen. That is all. It's very weird. It's it's almost like an article. It's like, hey, sometimes we don't just forget about things. We just don't <laughs> want to do them anymore, <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Like the reasoning, the the ones they actually said made a little more sense. Like Deadpool word balloons. They were like, yeah, it makes sense for Deadpool. And I guess we could have done ones for like Squirrel Girl or She Hulk or people that also break the fourth wall. But we just didn't. And you're like, oh, okay, I guess. Then they go into like Secret Wars Battle World. Like, see, we're never going to make another specific Battle World set, even though we could. And we wasted a lot of the set space with people not from Battle World. Just saying. And, you know, we're probably never going to give anyone else this trait, like, ever, even if we do hand out the keyword. And you're like, oh, cool. I guess God Doom had to have it. Sure. But... The two other characters with the Battle World keyword, I guess. Was it just two others? Um, what's her face? Singularity and Dinosaur Man, Stegron, were the only people outside of Battle World, besides, of course, Franklin and then Doctor Doom when they came out to have a Battle World keyword, I think, right? Yeah, I mean the like the whole chase theme minus the maker for Fantastic Four was Battle World. Um oh, sure. at least I think it was like god doom valeria franklin sue reed yeah the whole chase theme except for the maker and technically the maker's battle world but i don't think he got any keyword i don't think reed got it either even though i mean they didn't they weren't like barons of the battle world they were like the outside forces in battle world so it makes sense that they didn't get keywords but like to finish up the storyline it made sense for them to be there um but yeah at this point it wouldn't really make sense it would have been really cool for them to do more of the like side story characters because there were so many like one-off issues that were really good and were like really interesting. There's one where Daredevil isn't a crime fighter; he's just a super good chef because his palate is like super powered, and so he's like a really good chef. And like that would have been like an interesting something uh, rather than like a man thing commando or whatever they called it i don't know man thing commander man thing soldier yeah baby some terrible terrible generics uh but yeah that was that article i don't really want to talk about it any more than that so let's just move on shall we simeon this last week we played in two tournaments let's talk about which one? You actually start. You tell me which tournament you want to talk about first, and I'll talk about it. And then we'll talk about the other tournament. Uh, we already mentioned our teams. We played in both Gongai and the Sets Appeal tournament. Yeah, let's let's talk and about the Gongai our 2v2 final first. Because uh, there's not a lot to cover that we didn't already. Uh, we had one match left in the Gongai 2v2 before we recorded, I believe. Um, yes. So, yeah, the, the final match that we had... And when we went into this match, I was like, hey, if we both win and we score enough, maybe we can move on. And then I looked at the tournament standings and we hadn't scored enough points in the previous matches to actually go on. Even if we won, we still would have been like the bottom Mm -hmm. of the bracket, even with a double win. So, um, yeah, I wasn't like I there was no pressure going into it. I played against George uh, Masu. I think. Macer? Um, Macer? He seemed like a pretty okay dude. Yeah. Uh, I think he got confused while playing. I had to help him out a little bit a few times, help him figure mm. out some things, how they worked. Uh, he must be a fairly new player. But um, yeah, it was a fun game. It. I'll, I'll go into what I think my team really didn't do well with, and that kind of goes into the game, how the game went. Uh, my previous three game or my previous two games, I went to the Latvian Village map, which is an outdoor map with like blocking all over the place, not a lot of hindering, and I think that really hurt my team because I don't have any colossals on my team except Proteus, who doesn't do anything other than make barrier 
uh, like blocking terrain for me. But um, yeah, so like I went there twice and I was like, this map's really not working for me. So I decided to go to my favorite map, the Orville Bridge. And that map worked out a lot better for me. I was able to like really protect myself. He outranged my team by quite a bit. He had the same TK power, like literally the exact same figure using for TK as my team, but he was running Punisher War Machine. Um, he was running a Punisher War Machine, Gardner, Marvella, uh, Mary Jane. It was not a theme team, so it was those guys, uh, Captain Kirk and Uhura, the con exclusive figure, a Magneto 2x2 on his lower dial. Um, I want to say there was like something else. Maybe he had a Proteus as well. I don't, I don't remember. There's a few other things that I'm forgetting. Uh, Sharon Carter. So there was like a bunch of things happening on his team. Um, and I decided to go to the Orville bridge and I spent the entire game just barriering up because I never had a solid opening and my team's not really a great team to, like, let your opponent attack first. So I played a way that I don't really care to play, and that's just barriering. But it took me a long time to figure out each turn if I, like, had an attack opening or not. Um, I made a robot dupe of his uh, Punisher War Machine. I did manage to hit his Gardener with it for four damage at one point, And then he... I think he like supported him back up to full or he regened or something somehow. Yeah. I think <clears> it hits Gardner to regen and then he healed back up. But um, yeah, so I had a lot of stuff going on. I only ever got up to four plot points with uh board queen. This would have been the only match where I would have been able to really bring something over to my side. And one, he didn't, position in a way where I ever was going to be able to KO something that was small like a 25 or 15 point piece he did not position in any way where I was going to be able to get to those and two even if I could have they weren't really worth bringing over to my team like Mary Jane maybe so I could have had my own paparazzi uh, Marvella maybe so I could have had more barrier but realistically it would have been like an overreach on my part and it just wouldn't have worked so uh, it ended up almost going to a 0-0 zero, zero loss, but then he, he did manage to take out Borg Queen and one set of double attacks with Punisher War Machine. Um, I overextended to get a shot off, hoping for something, and there just wasn't any follow-up on my part. So, uh, yeah, he was able to capitalize in the last couple minutes of the game. And that's where, I guess... Do you want me to get into what I would change about my team? Yeah. 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 Okay. What were the, the flaws? So really quick, remind everybody what your team was. Sure. Uh, you know, so don't go into crazy depth, but yeah. This team was a ruler theme team with uh, the Borg Queen title character. Uh, she's 100 points. It was the, the main figures were the Borg Queen, the Medusa uh, from ABPI that can generate hair. The whole idea behind that is that Borg Queen can just endlessly pump out plot points. It doesn't matter if I take damage because I can, same turn as I generate it, KO the Medusa hair just by moving it away from Medusa. And if something is next to Borg Queen and it is KO'd, a friendly character next to Borg Queen is KO'd, then her team ability kicks in. And it's basically like a support role. It's minimum one, it's minus two of a D6, minimum one. So um, it's like a support role that just automatically succeeds. And it's great for characters that are generated for free and cost nothing. Medusa is really good at making those hairs and letting them die. So I like those two pieces. I think those two pieces have to stay. Um, there's also the Jason Wingard who just allows me to have way more offense on the team. I can bring in whatever, like, uh, you know, Swiss army knife, like figure I need in for like whatever scenario, if I need like a perplex or I need a hypersonic piece or a TK or a barrier, whatever I'm missing from my current team, I can bring it in with him. Um, I had the Herald dial on Borg queen, I never got the Herald dial above click two. 
I did get the uh, what is it called the elemental elemental converter. converter. Yeah, I did yeah. get that up to like click five or six, but never okay. never anything like I very rarely went past turn four or five. It was just very slow paced games with my team. Um, and then the rest of the team was just filler. It was Magneto, Grodd, all at like low points. Magneto 2x2, two two, Grodd at 10 points, and Proteus at 10 points. Just to fill in, you know, for whatever like theme I needed. Um, they didn't not do things, but Magneto was the only one that like got used for sure every game. And so what I figured out pretty quickly going on is that uh, Borg Queen's real utility is just completely gone in current modern because she starts with zero plot points. You need uh, one plot point per 10 points, per full 10 points of a character that you KO to bring it onto your team, plus one additional one. So if a character is nine points and you KO them, you need one plot point technically uh if they're 15 or like 19 you'd need one plot point for the full 10 points and then one plot point on top of that if they're 20 you need three etc etc um it's per full 10 like 10 full points it doesn't round or anything so it is nice if it's like a 15 point character i was really hoping somebody would be running like a wendigo or something like that and i'd be able to snap that over to my team but um mm. What I quickly found out is in the current meta kind of like standard gameplay, most teams can get to you and can start dealing you damage by turn two pretty easily. Uh, turn three for sure. Um, sometimes even turn one. So this team is very much like a... You need your turns to be over quickly. And that just wasn't the case for me. It was taking me a long time to figure out like what I really wanted to do because I was going to an open map, and so it was fairly bad. But um, in a non-Highlander format, if I was playing something similar to this again, I would still do the medusa Borg queen combo. I'm not 100% sold on the Herald Dial being on Borg queen I like it for the Elemental Converter. And so that's probably what I would keep it for if I was going to keep it. Um, I would probably throw on the Spider Pharaoh just to do the the whole uh, named theme team. And then I also get the Empower Enhancement and Prob. I also get a taxi that can carry three people, which was something sorely missing in my other team. Uh, and then I'd, since I'm already Spider-Man family, I'd probably put on three Marvellas, and the team would basically turn into uh, just two barriers every turn, crank up the Borg Queen's dial, or the plot points, heal her with, like, Medusa whenever I need to, and just, like, keep cranking out plot points until I get to, you know, four or five or whatever, and then on a turn where I can actually bring a KO'd character out, like try and shoot somebody out there to KO something. Uh, there's not a lot of amazing attack on this team. It would basically be Spider Pharaoh carrying Medusa up and then Medusa dropping a hair and hitting for like four damage potentially, which isn't bad. That's mm. enough to KO retaliators. And then I could bring that over to my team. So like in the case of like a dark Phoenix, if it hasn't healed up, I can just pop that over to my team and then shoot somebody, potentially KO somebody else, heal my own Dark Phoenix up. So that would be the change to the team. Um, I'm not 100% sold on it ever working realistically, but I think I'm going to keep trying, especially with 1776 being popular and Borg Queen being able to just give me as many actions as I technically need. Okay, right on. Yeah, I always dug the idea of the team, and like I know you've been wanting to use Borg Queen for a while, so I think the refinements there. Obviously, the name theme team is huge. So yeah, I yeah. dig that. I dig that idea in order to, a team uh, to bump I, it a little bit. I really hate to run, which is like run yeah. out the clock on your opponent. You're kind of holding up the whole time, but yeah. without. So the whole reason for barrier isn't to 
it isn't to like keep my team safe and just like not do anything. It's to keep my team safe, not do anything and end my turn as quickly as I can so that I can get like as many turns and therefore as many plot points. Right. So it is like, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's just like a barrier tech team and anyone that has like improved movement through uh, blocking or anyone that puts me on like an outdoor map can probably get around it. But, uh, the idea that I could just hole up and like really crank out the elemental converter, uh, really crank out some plot points, maybe get board queen to like bring in like a 50 or 60 point character. If I really like stress the clock, I don't know. Yeah. The only bad part about that is it also re- relies on your opponent playing somewhat fast as well. So oh, for sure. you really have to delete all of their options by being like, look, I just have so much barrier. There's nothing you can do, bro. You know, unless you got someone who walks and destroys their barrier, which it's like two people that probably even do that in modern right now. It's not a lot or ones that are viably competitive, I guess. So yeah. Besides Tri Sentinel, of course, he would be the exception for those until, listening yeah, at home. Until he gets a rat Obvious, out of this team, obviously, definitely doesn't work. Yeah, Tri Sentinel does is definitely the wrench that gets thrown into. Yeah. Even with like three layers of barrier, he just like wipes it all. He's like, eh. Yeah, that, that was a free haha, action. Goodbye. Haha, look at me, I'm Tri Sentinel. It's not retail; it's free action. Haha, funny, funny. Anyways, uh, my team. I don't really want to go into any of my games. They all just started really slow. None of them. Well, okay, sort of one devolved into the way I enjoy hero clicks, which is my guys punch your guys, and that's all we know how to do for the turn. Most of them started off, and I I heavily dislike chess. There's a reason I play hero clicks and not chess, and very much a few of my games, and most of the time starting my games was a big chess match, which is why I enjoyed, you know, Sam Cap, Alpha Strike teams, what I enjoyed playing before. <laughs> positioning battles are not fun to play or watch to me like that is not entertaining watching me move my little figurines around and put up barrier yeah and this isn't a dig at so me this I is just like did, what yeah. i did literally what i just described um, that's which, why yeah. <laughs> I, that's why i also don't like it because if you give your opponent like no options offensively and they just like have to like clear every turn or slowly inch closer every turn it becomes a really, a really long, annoying game, and it's super boring mm-hmm. to watch from like the ones I've seen that happen like that. I will, nine times out of ten, always be the person to try to overextend their reach or whatever to get the first attack off. I, I can't stand, you know. So just for a quick reminder for my team, it was Josiah X, 50 points, the Super Scroll at 50 points, 1776, Captain Marvel, and Marvella, Mary Jane, Soul Gem, Corvus's Glaive, uh, and then the five point map bonus for Stark Tower. So, really, if I wanted to, if I wanted to play like the worst human being ever, I could have just sat in the back the whole time, you know, and just m- tried to make robots with Josiah X. I always gave it to Josiah X. I one map every game. Yep. So, I also one map every game with only a plus 16 team, which is nice. And I always gave that to Josiah X because he's not doing anything else. And I could have just sat in the back, waited for a bolt to pop up and be like, all right, uh, bolt, we'll try to hypersonic, see if we can one shot a, you know, try Sentinel, you know, one, one game when I pulled off the bolt runs across the map and kills a Mr. Oz is pretty awesome. That was my favorite when that happened. So I was try. I tried to do that again in my game against Chip. We did not get lucky and rolled two eights in a row. Sadly, uh, I actually rolled a crit miss, so deleted bolt for free right there. You know, so in certain games, you know, you could do that. I could just sit in the back the whole time, and then the game would probably just go to time because the robots aren't good. But if your opponent doesn't do something about it, then woohoo, here we are. But that's lame. So with Captain Marvel messing with my whole scroll team idea that I've been messing with for a while here. I just wanted to extend the reach. Ping damage is good, whatever. But what I noticed is even though she has hypersonic and everything, and even though Super Scroll can get sidestep charge, sidestep running shot, sacrificing defense in order to get that reach is really, really bad, which is why Captain Marvel needs to be on the team. But also, if my opponent doesn't quite move up enough, the game goes too slow 
to purely rely and in order to get safely back to another spot with Captain Marvel to rely on just Captain Marvel's hypersonic speed. So the team sorely needs telekinesis, like really, really badly. I I don't think there's a single game I played where I was like, man, if I could only just TK back Captain Marvel, this whole thing would be way easier. And I guess even though it's kind of a waste since he already has perplex, it would be like, you know, give it to 1776 or even, I guess, Super Scroll, I suppose, make him a TK -er, a really tanky TK, -er, I guess. I don't know, which is kind of a lame secondary role for uh, a Super Scroll to take. But yeah, I mean, just like a lot of my problems would have been solved if I could have just done that. Another thing, Pulse Wave, Pulse Wave really sucks and I do not enjoy it. So <laughs> Pulse Wave against Super Scroll. I knew this for the longest time playing Super Scrolls, but the amount of single target Pulse Waves, which was two in the games I played, but still, he still died twice out of three games. Not a fan. Um, Pulse Wave is quickly becoming my least favorite power purely for the fact that I play Super Scroll all the time. And it's, uh, it's you know, everything's got to have a Achilles heel. And he gets all these cool, nice things. He's not protected outwit either. So Pulse Wave just is like, ah, yes, you're 17 defense, you fool. So it sucks. You know, I think most of my games, I legitimately think I could have won all of my games if I would have played better. I just think I played. I didn't think about my opponent's reach a lot. I didn't think about how they could retaliate once I overstepped my reach. And I was kind of believing in the heart of the cards a little bit too much. So I'll just say that for sure. And I don't think either dice rolls were crazy hot for either team. Even against the Black Widow team, I only rolled a four once, which I wouldn't be allowed to prob. So my dice rolls weren't bad. I guess I did win that game. Although fun fact about that game, I won it at 30 points. But every other game I played, I got more points than the only game I won on all the other games that I lost, which is very ironic to me. It hurt me watching so, yeah. the end of that game. I was like, because uh, the last like turn, Calder got Black Widow to stop. Like He had gotten her stop click previously, and she healed back up because of the tradecraft. He got her back to the stop, and her stop is just stop, the remove the tradecraft things, heal, blah, blah, blah. Um, but it's a 10, 10, printed 10 defense with no defensive powers. And he had Marvella sitting right there with no actions and sidestep and one damage and a nine attack. So uh, anything but a crit miss would have worked. And I was just like, see it, Calder. See it. See the p opportunity. <laughs> but I did not. Still, and it would have been hilarious. Yeah, Calder still did yeah. uh, a lot better than I did all of my games. Um my team was just not super offensive. It relied heavily on like what my opponents played and none of them played things that I really could have taken advantage of. So maybe that's just the fault of the team is just like, it's not great against, you know, probably 75% of other builds. It just is fairly good against 25%. And that's not a great ratio right. to be at. And ladies and gentlemen, that was that was Gong Guy. Let's go ahead and talk about sets appeal a little bit. Simeon, how did your first game go? Just a quick one. And then mention any other teams you built or what would have been around you would have been most excited to play if you moved on, spoiler alert, further in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, so the only uh, the only team I ended up getting to play was my web of spider-man and for that one my original build was going to be bullseye who ignores uh shape change and super senses he's got like a 12 attack three damage he's pretty solid um 10 range he's just super solid it's going to be bullseye j jonah jameson to bump up bullseye's defense with perplex and then groot who is just a tank and i played a couple games where my opponents had a, a couple practice things where my opponents had just a lot of stealth and I realized like especially Nightcrawler on the map that we were playing even if I won map we'd be on the same map and there's plenty of stealth for Nightcrawler to be in and I was like that pretty much takes all of Bullseye's like viability away so I ended up going with Groot at 152 points Vector at 68 points uh, 
Black Cat at 52 and Night Nurse. And so the idea was Black Cat has stealth, 17 defense, and Spider-Man ally team ability. So she can copy defenders from Groot. She has a 20 in defense, or 20 in uh, hindering because she's copying the 18 and then she's got combat reflexes and most figures. I don't think there's any figures that see through stealth. So that was the idea there. Groot doesn't have any moving attacks, so I put Vector on the team to TK him around. Uh, he is a giant, and he becomes a colossal, but as long as he's a single base character, you can TK him around. That was fun, but my opponent just rolled like fairly hot. I'm not going to blame it completely on the dice, because he... Uh, well, the thing I really didn't realize, and this hurt me right off the bat, I lost Night Nurse like turn two. Uh, the thing that I super didn't realize was that the sharpshooter team ability allows you not only to shoot out of adjacency but also ignore characters when you're shooting so um, night nurse just got blasted by uh, his bullseye like turn one or turn two so that was bad I lost night nurse right away she was going to be the one that potentially healed Groot back up if need be and also gave me bonuses to defense so that just didn't happen. Um, I really had to push Vector a lot to get Groot anywhere. He His team had outranged me by, you know, over 10 squares in most cases. So none of my figures had range. I really had to close the gap, and I didn't go for his outwit piece. I kind of positioned poorly and couldn't get the TK in range to get to his outwit piece. And that would have probably saved me the game. But he still, he like rolled like a, a couple 10s and 11s that I was just banking on him not hitting. And uh, especially with my black cat, I was like, oh, I'll be able to prob, but Bullseye can shoot way outside of her range. So it wasn't even, wasn't even something that I could prob. It just ended up being a pretty one-sided mm -hmm. game. I killed his Nightcrawler with Groot. Um I think I hit him, like, twice with Groot. So that was, like, my one thing that I managed to do in that game. But otherwise, yeah. Uh, the team that I really wanted to play... I really wanted to try my Slosh team, which was High Father, Chameleon Girl, and the Riddler. And that was just going to be Chameleon Girl getting, like, sidestep, charge, flurry... And High Father saying, like, their highest point character can't attack until they've taken damage, so... I could basically ignore like anyone playing Dark Side or anything like that. But the team that I, I really wanted to play the most was my Crisis team. And that was uh, the Ordinary Day Battlefield Condition, to cancel out any other Battlefield Conditions. Uh, the Opportunist uh, feat card on Star Sapphire. Star Sapphire, who just starts with TK. She gets some better stuff later, but it's Running Shot TK. Green Arrow, who needs TK because he's got like a stealth stealth range combat expert top dial. And he's got a cool trait that allows him to um, allows him to increase his attack by plus two if he's only targeting a single character, which is perfectly fine with me because that's how uh, that's how range combat expert works anyhow. Uh, when you make a ranged combat attack, his attack value goes up by 2. So he's rocking a 10 for 2. Uh, he instantly becomes a 12 for 2 with 10 range. So I can TK out 6 squares. have an effective range of 16 with him with triple lightning bolts. Not that I was going to use that, but um, he'd be a 12 for 2 with ranged combat expert. I also had the chief on there. And chief has outwit perplex uh leadership mastermind he's got support top dial he's got a bunch of stuff outsiders so i could do a bunch of stuff with chief hopefully i'd be within range where i could outwit their defense and bump up uh green arrows damage so i'd be a 12 for two uh, i could make him a 13 for three or put a perplex into uh attack so i'd be a 13 and then my range combat expert both into damage so i'd be a 13 for four 
And then again, the uh, what was her name? The Star Sapphire. She starts with Perplex as well. Perplex and Barrier. Uh, so I could have been like a 13 for five and not that it's like crazy. It's basically a singular, uh, attacker kind of team. There's a lot of like lead up to making green arrow, a really solid attacker, but between the outsiders outwit all the perplex and like stat modifiers, I feel like green arrow really could have just been like a glass cannon kind of thing. Just like blowing people out of the water. And, uh, that seemed like a good like a good team. It seemed like a fun team. I would have liked to have seen how it went. Right. Uh, my experience in sets field was very similar. I lost out round one, which is a huge bummer. I know everybody. Uh, we're not sounding like the coolest hosts ever in our awesome losing tournaments this week. But I, I went up against a bullseye as well. He had bullseye, jackal, vector and uh, Night Nurse. My team being the Novar, Vector, uh, Toxin, and then J. Jonah Jameson. I made a pretty obvious error right away where I put Toxin in front of Novar to protect him, realizing that just sentenced my Toxin to death, pretty much, because obviously Bullseye ignores shape change and super senses, and that's all poor Toxin has protecting him besides his wonderful, amazing 17 defense, which, oddly enough, if I would have perplexed it up, perplexed it up with J. Jonah Jameson, he would have still be, been alive because Bullseye rolled a 5, and I'm like, well, I could have parked him in hindering or perplexed up his defense or, you know, anything. Uh, why I didn't do those things, the world may never know. And, you know, I messed up right away on positioning. That was bad, obviously. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to run up. I can't single target pulse wave anybody, and I think I'll rather just pulse wave your whole team. And I perplexed up Novar to a 13 attack, running shot, pulse wave, and I rolled a three, which means I hit Jackal for one and Night Nurse for one, and that was it. I'm like, really? I rolled a three, huh? Cool, cool. Very cool. Couldn't have even rolled like a four of double twos, which would have been infinitesimally, not a word, but whatever. Would have been way better. So, yeah, I'll blame it a little bit on dice rolls. You know, I don't think my opponent had any stellar dice rolls. I don't think I rolled any crit misses or anything. But missing the opening pulse wave, and then I believe I rolled two fives with the next couple attacks with Novar with, you know, a 12, 11 attack value. You're just like, man, this sucks. So the, just, the game really devolved from there, sadly. I was really looking forward to playing Crisis as well. I think that was the most fun set to build out of and the set I definitely wanted to get to. My team was Uncle Sam, 140 points. Dude, he's Uncle Sam. If you haven't seen our Thursday throwdown of Crisis versus Mutations and Monsters, go check it out. It's awesome. Uncle Sam is great. He's nine clicks long, which is just dope. Uh, it was Uncle Sam. It was the Chief, and then it was Rip Hunter. So really quick, Rip Hunter has a special damage power, which he can use Outwit and Probability Control. The standard and named powers of Rip Hunter and friendly characters adjacent to him can't be countered, which is awesome. <coughs> so Rip Hunter, he's only a 9 for 2. You know, no special attack, whatever. He's got Hyper Time. He's got a 16 Super Senses, but he's a 9 speed phasing, which means I'm pretty much just using Rip Hunter to teleport around the map, Outwit people. He's a, you know, a prob. And then all of my powers can't be countered, which makes Uncle Sam's invulnerability just that much better, right? And then, of course, I had the Chief, who has, like Simeon said, Outwit, Perplex, Mastermind, Support, and the whole um, whatever tokens thing, which helps me ignore pushing damage potentially. So the whole strategy of the team was Outsider's Uncle Sam with Chief, so he doesn't get the negative two from the move and attack ability put the chief and rip hunter either one probably just rip hunter into position where we can maybe with the chief perplex down someone's defense out with the defense with chief uncle sam runs up punches somebody for four he should only need a seven to hit i believe like the average defense being an 18 perplex down 17 nine times out of 10 is what i should have been rolling against hit somebody for four damage right away you know move an attack ability back a little bit and then 
Uncle Sam's protected outwit. The chief is protected outwit, so he can use Mastermind as much as he pleases, whatever. And Rip Hunter can then use his outwit instead of outwitting the defense like Chief did. He can outwit maybe someone's move and attack or something, you know. So, or any powers that might be useful like, to be used against Rip Hunter, et cetera, et cetera. So, I thought I had a really solid team. I thought it was really good. Obviously, I had a pretty solid strategy with it. And thinking that people might play Dark Side or that Superman. If you play the Superman in the set, you can't afford to play the Chief just because of like the way the points work out. So that Superman can't ignore pushing damage at all. And I was probably going to play some, I don't know, wacky feat or battlefield condition with it. There's no room on the team for feats. It actually came out to an even 300, which is really cool about it. But yeah, I, I really liked the team. I thought it was really creative. I thought it was fun to play. I'll probably want to play it against somebody sometime anyways, just to see how well it would do, because I think it's a really solid team, giving everybody outwit protection, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I think it's great. So, so yeah, that was my team. We can go ahead and get into whatever next. Simeon, any thoughts at all before we move on? Yeah, I do want to say um, uh, Chance McCall did make it on a last oh yeah that's right last second uh somebody dropped out and left their position vacated and chance was able to jump into that position with no forewarning of what was going on he managed to get to crisis um and then he was beat out by a, a similar team to what he had it just came down to like dice rolls and from what i saw it came down to mostly dice rolls and uh, it's not like his opponent rolled really hot, but like he missed a few fairly critical attacks, and uh, he was running, in Crisis at least, he was running uh, Dark Side at full and the Chief, so he was running at 273 was all. But uh, yeah, he did a great job for somebody that was not at all prepared for the tournament and Absolutely. jumped into it like one night before. Um and I would say, like, I really liked this tournament. Uh, I really liked the Golden Age aspect, but not allowing just, like, any Golden Age. Like, keeping it set-specific really forces people to kind of, uh, you know, cut corners on their teams. They can't have, like, all the best things. They have to, like, pay extra for certain pieces. Um, kind of have to, like, have an idea of, like, what can do what and... You know, like if if you sacrifice TK on a team, then you better hope that you've got like decent range, that kind of thing. So it was a very interesting uh, tournament, and I really hope that they do something similar down the line. The only thing I would change is, especially since I got knocked out turn one, I would really like to see it uh, be uh, like either pods or uh, some sort of some sort of format where maybe like double elimination kind of thing where like you lose, you lose and you go to a loser's bracket. Uh, that way I would have been able to at least play my second team, but that's just a personal gripe because I thought I was going to do better and I did not. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Same here. I think I can think we can both agree. I'm like, yeah, we thought we were going to do better, but no, no, we didn't. That was probably the only bad part about having to make all the teams in advance where you're like, man, I really hope I get to X set, and then you don't, and you're like, man, maybe I'm bad at hero clicks, but I, I really do think, uh, I do think the dice were were really rough. So, moving on in the show, we're gonna go ahead and jump into generic gallery. Why should you care? Keywords. 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 So why should you care? Keywords. It's only game. Why do you have to be mad? Celebrity, police, past, and scientist, assassin, soldier, spy, tinker, tailor. No, they, they're not in there, but, you know, you get it. For those of you that maybe haven't listened to, it's been pretty spotty, actually. So I'll, we, we're going to recap it anyways. Generic gallery is pretty straightforward. We're going to take a look at a generic keyword. Me and Simeon are both going to make teams from it. And we're going to mention some standout figures we think are just really good with the keyword so this week's keyword is politician and i used to all the time make politician generic teams it was i i always preferred making generic theme teams than like theme theme teams just normally i always just prefer generic keywords to mix either mix a bunch of sets or there were certain characters i wanted to play they weren't all avengers you know like that's the whole point 
of a generic keyword, right? So politician, Simeon, do you have any standout like politician characters that you seem to always think of when you hear about the politician keyword? Uh, I mean, the very first one I always think of is Rebirth Prez Ricard. Um, I can't remember who it was mm. that decided to make him. I want to say it was it was like somebody in the South American Nationals, but I don't want to I don't want to guess the country because yeah. I have no idea off the top of my head. But um, Prez Ricard is just first of all, it's an awesome comic. Uh, even like the the new version of Prez is a pretty fun comic with Corn Dog Girl. Um, but Prez is just a rock star for thirty five okay. points. Okay, have you, you you haven't heard of the new Prez okay. comic? It came no, out, I, I guess don't it know came out in like Corn Dog Girl. Uh, so it came out in like 2016. Uh, it was this weird election where the uh, electorate, like the electorate people, were trying to get their votes bought by one of like the two candidates, and then as a write-in candidate, a bunch of people voted for this girl known as Corn Dog Girl because of this viral video where she was working at like a corn dog stand and like accidentally stuck her hair in the fryer or something. So she became known as corn dog girl. A bunch of people wrote in her name. She got put on like the ballot with like 1% vote or something. So the electorates, as they're trying to get the two candidates to like buy their vote via, you know, whatever shady means, um, instead of just like holding off on their vote, they're using her as like a placeholder thinking that like she can't win so all these people are like putting their votes their like electorate votes on her and this is not worth talking about at all but anyhow uh they put all their electorate votes on her i was seeing the same point, thing but we're already into the <laughs> at a certain point uh she ends up getting enough electorate votes to like win the election just because these guys weren't paying attention to what they were doing they were too greedy trying to get like the two candidates to like win them over with like money and uh, whatever. And so they accidentally basically elect this like 18 year old hot dog stand girl, uh, known as corn dog girl. And she becomes the president and it's like a future something. I don't know they've got mech suits and different stuff. So there's some fun little stories in there, but that's a redo version of the original Prez comic, which is where Prez Ricard is from. And that's why I was talking about it. But anyhow, this Prez, uh, he doesn't count for or against theme teams, so he works on every team. Anytime you've got 35 points and you don't have a leadership, uh, this guy's probably the best thing you have available. And he's got an 18 defend top dial, which is actually pretty darn solid for 35 points. He doesn't have any willpower, but you can push him to click 2 to get a perplex plus his 18 defend, which is also really solid. And then his big thing is uh, the Golden Age of America. He's got traded leadership, but it succeeds on a 4 through 6, which is a 50-50 roll instead of the normal 5 through 6, uh, when he uses it and succeeds. So not only is it a 50-50, but when he succeeds on that, instead you may remove one action token from each... Uh, e you may remove one action token each from any number of opposing characters... So like 5, 10, 12, however many. Uh, for each one removed, you remove an action token from a friendly character within six squares. Um, and that's huge. Uh, being able to really shift like the balance, being able to give like half your team or your full team an extra turn. And like, yeah, you're freeing up your opponent, but if you've got like three main attackers and you free up one or two action tokens from like a support piece and then one action token from somebody that you're planning on attacking that turn. Sometimes you can like negate the benefit that you give to your opponent and it's a really solid power. Um, that's the first politician that I ever think of when I'm looking for the keyword because he's just a rock star when it comes to support. Okay, nice. I think of another rock star support figure in the form of Howard the Duck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I really like Howard. I really like him a lot. I'm talking about Secret Invasion Howard the Duck, too. Uh, he is stealth, so he's a little piece of mobile blocking, really. Is this he's the willpower, which is great. This is this is not the Quack Fu one. This is just Secret Invasion, 35-point first appearance, standing on top of the trash cans, Howard Duck. Why I like him is because he's a 35-point leadership, 
And if you choose to at any point in time, you're like, I want to get rid of leadership, he pushes on to perplex or or what I like to do is especially on a uh, politician theme team where there's quite a bit of mastermind to go around. Uh, three damage is the magical number. Four damage will knock him off on to his non perplex click that he has. But if you mastermind three damage to old Howard, he then goes on perplex, which is really solid. So I just dig Howard. He's fun little tie up too. He has a 16 combat reflexes on click three. Uh, also characters of note that are just really, really good politicians is like Senator Robert Kelly. The old version with the mutant registration act is really good. The Nighthawk super rare prime from Nick Fury agents of shield I don't is obviously awesome. That. Yeah. No, I don't think you will either just completely getting rid of your opponent's ability to positively modify their combat values map wide is pretty gnarly it's pretty darn good plus he he himself has what sidestep outwit and then he can use esd shape change when he uses shape change increase the result by plus one for each adjacent friendly character is his defense power now he's not protected outwit so you can't get rid of that but still oh and he gives friendly characters just can't be targeted by mind control so it's pretty yeah. awesome he's pretty yeah, darn good for 65 points Sure, no willpower, but he has a shape change mastermind, and of course that pluses to shape change gives him really good staying power. And then a, he's a ten for three with six range sidestep, so you know he can take some pew, pew, some pot shots if he so pleases. So those are just some that really come to my mind. Um, ones of note that I always put on teams were like the zombie green goblin being my first zombie I ever pulled. I played every possible team I could with him. I played him on monsters, played him on politician. Uh, I don't think he even had that many Sinister Syndicate to play him with any of those. And then when I finally got more zombies, I played him with uh, with the zombies, obviously. So like Green Goblin, and then of course Kingpin is also a politician. Those are the ones that really, really pop out to me, to name a few. So I mean, if you have any other uh, honorable mentions of the keyword, if not, you can go ahead and get into your 400-point politician team. Yeah, so the only honorable mention that I'll give out before I get into my team is the Earth X politicians. Uh <coughs> Almost all of them either have the uh, the crime boss trait or the new boss every week trait, and both of those traits are really solid. Uh, I really love playing a ton of the New York crime boss, or uh, yeah, I think that's what all of it is, and that's the one where if they succeed with leadership, you get to either take an action token off like normal, or you can generate two of the hired flunkies, and the hired flunkies aren't anything amazing they're like a nine for one with exploit but on the like the correct build of a team like if you throw in the superior foes of spider-man um what is his name uh baron zemo they <coughs> copy the keyword the thunderbolts keyword so they the hired flunkies end up getting the plus one attack and sidestep in addition to their like stealth and exploit. So they actually like, there's a lot of ways to kind of keyword cheat and get some really fun little dudes. But my team, I'm going to start off with the highest point figure and work my way down. So uh, I decided to throw on the fantastic four title character, Dr. Doom 2099 revolutionary. Uh, it's just Doom 2099, I guess. They didn't give him the Doctor title in the future. Um, so this guy, I mean, we've gone over him before when he was previewed, but he has the plus zero plot ability, which is free, make an attack that deals one penetrating damage instead of norm normal damage. So it's a free attack, and it deals one penetrating damage. So already pretty solid, a free attack. Um, and that means that he's not taking the unavoidable damage because... He's making an attack to use this. If the attack hits, gain one plot point. If the attack hits the highest point or tied opposing character on the map, instead gain three plot points. So you don't have to damage them. You don't have to damage the character to actually get the plus three. Uh, and once you get, you start with one. So we'll go with the minus one plot ability. That's stealing the shipment as part of the Zafiro resistance, which is such a 2099 thing. Uh, free. Choose an adjacent opposing character. If they aren't equipped, then modify defense minus two this turn. Otherwise, unequip that character's equipment. Uh, I don't know how great unequipping them is, but I know minus two defense is pretty awesome, uh, especially as just like a free action. You don't really want to be adjacent, but it's still pretty cool. 
as a minus one if like your opponent moves up and you weren't planning on them moving up you can kind of punish them for that and then if you manage to get to minus seven which you could technically do in like two turns then the minus seven plot ability is one nation under doom and that is free for the rest of the game for each opposing character the first time each turn that opposing character would be given a close range move or power action, you may roll a d6 on a 3 through 6 that character can't be given that type of action that turn. And that's for the rest of the game, for each opposing character, mm. the first time that turn. So, and then like freeze not included in that, so they can't like try and like sidestep and get around it. They just have to hope that you roll really bad at that point. And I think that he's like... I'm surprised that he's as overlooked as he is. He doesn't have like stellar combat values or powers. He starts with running shot, energy explosion. He's an 11, 18, four. So he's got invulnerability, uh, in Dom four damage without wit. He's not a bad attacker by any means. He's just not 125 points worth of what we kind of expect. But I think that's because that minus seven is just really crazy good. Uh, so, we went with him, and then, is. of course, the the prime Nighthawk would be on any politician team if I could. Um, but as a cheaper alternative to the pol- or to Nighthawk for politician, the same points uh, would be Mister Negative at sixty five points, and Mister Negative has the New York crime boss thing, so that's leadership mastermind traded. When he uses leadership and succeeds, instead of removing the action token, you can generate those hired flunky bystanders, which are great tie-up pieces or just whatever you want them to be. Um, one damage exploit can't be really be overlooked. It still gets through most defenses. Um, he's got the he starts with the speed power, light and dark, which is sidestep or stealth. You get to pick one until your next turn, and then he's got a defense power for the majority of his dial which is toughness and he can't be knocked back but as long as you're in stealth and you're surrounded by the hired flunkies you can usually use the either stealth or mastermind to get rid of that kind of stuff you don't have to worry about taking damage usually uh he starts with outwit and then he goes to a special damage power that is empower exploit and support which if you have a couple hired flunkies and you've got a, a empower next to him then all of a sudden they're hitting for like, you know, two exploit, which is pretty solid. So either Nighthawk or Mr. Negative, depending on what your budget and what your collection is at. Um, up next, one of my favorite figures from RIP, and that is the Ghost of Abraham Lincoln. You can do Zombie Abraham Lincoln for basically the same thing, but I prefer Ghost of Abraham Lincoln because his dial's longer, and he's got, in my opinion, better stats better stay ability so he has the ghostly form trait which doesn't work for this team it just allows him to carry ghost realm people uh he has a special movement power that all the ghosts in r.i.p have and that is free choosing a posing character that ghost of abraham lincoln moved through this turn unique modifier the chosen character modifies modifies its attack minus two until your next turn that just happens it's pretty sweet it's not as great as jacob marley's but uh you just move through somebody and then as a free action, give them minus two attack. It's pretty easy to like mess with your opponents like turn. If like all of a sudden one of their characters has a minus two attack. Uh, and then of course the biggest thing that he has and the main reason he's on the team is his four score and seven years ago, uh, damage power once per attack. When a friendly character, when a friendly character's attack roll is a four or a seven choose after resolutions, remove an action token from the attacker, or, after resolutions, give the target an action token. So you can keep your opponents uh, tied up with action tokens, or you can keep your friendlies with actions taken off. And that couples with Prezra Card really well. So I've already talked about him, but he's, of course, on the team. Uh, giving your opponent an action token and then succeeding on leadership with Prezra Card allows you to take that off, which is pretty sweet. Um... I threw on the 45-point main set, Triple H, from the WWE set. Uh, The only reason he is on there, he's got stuff on his dial, but it doesn't matter. The only reason he's on there is he's 45 points, and he has a special damage power that is Empower, and then friendly characters that are adjacent or share a keyword with him besides WWE can use Empower. So that turns everyone 
on this team into somebody with Empower, meaning uh, if Mr. Negative makes hired flunkies, they have like a four damage exploit if they're next to a bunch of other people. That's pretty solid. Um, anyone that gets close to like Doom Revolutionaries taking like seven or something, uh, it gets pretty crazy when you start adding it all up. Uh, then I've got Dr. Doom from the Fantastic Four set. This is, I believe, yeah, the uncommon, uh, unique Dr. Doom at 45 points. Starts with running shot, energy explosion, six range, two lightning bolts, and then he's got leadership mastermind. When he uses leadership and succeeds, instead of the normal effect, you may generate a Doom bot. Uh, you can add the plus five points that fits in the team if you want the plus five trait, uh, which is when placing characters during your game, you can uh, generate two Doom bots and then place this Doom on the card until those are KO'd. Uh, so that's an optional thing. Um, I kind of like Doom just being on the map to generate Doom bots himself, though. And then last but not least is the Fast Forces from the Joker's Wild, the Penguin. Now, if you didn't see this thing played, he got played on a lot of teams, and the whole reason why... I mean, there's a couple reasons why, but the whole main reason why is he has a single trait. He doesn't really do anything for your team other than this trait. He's 25 points. He's unique. It's at the beginning of the game, you place a loyalty token on another friendly character's card. The character with the loyalty token modifies its attack and range values plus one. So that would give Doom Revolutionary like a 12 with uh, eight range. That would give the uncommon Dr. Doom a 12 with 7 range etc and so that's it's just a really cheap modifier that you get like 2 modifications from and then you can also uh, adjacent friendly character can be given a free action to attack the penguin and if they hit him instead of dealing him damage they can transfer the loyalty marker to someone else so if you leave somebody in the back you can or a couple people in the back even, like even hired flunkies, you can hit the penguin a couple times and bounce the loyalty marker around during your turn to give different people the pluses to attacks and range. Um, this team has a lot of outwit. Uh, whether you go with Nighthawk or Mr. Negative, they both have outwit. Dr. Doom has outwit at the bottom of his dial. Triple H pushes to outwit. Um, Prezer card pushes to perplex. Ghost of Abraham Lincoln just has the ability to give people action tokens, but then Doom Revolutionary has four clicks of Outwit, two clicks of Prob, so he's also... It's the only fault that I can think this team would really run into is Power Cosmic, where it's just going to like leave a lot of your damage slot completely useless, and that's a little sad, but you're still doing a lot of damage with all of these guys, so... I think it's a pretty solid team. I think it's pretty fun. Absolutely. I think we went kind of different routes. I looked at Triple H, though, too. I mean, obviously, the team in power is just so dope. I almost put a zombie Abraham Lincoln on my team, actually. But Ghost Abraham Lincoln is better. Neither on the team, but he is better. Uh, on the team, though, is your mention, Prez Ricard, for, for all the reasons you mentioned, more, mostly because of that 18 defend. And I'll get to with my next pick, which is when I try to play Politician, I'm like, how many presidents can I put on the team? How many, uh, like, politician-y people, I guess, can I put on? Like, Green Goblin has the politician keyword, and I honestly don't know why. I get the president Goblin gets it. I must have missed the Spider-Man arc when he runs for, like, county commissioner or, like, mayor or something, because I don't know why the regular Green Goblin... hammer. So, I mean... Right. But, like, it you a politician got or... Uh, sure. It makes no sense, sure. but I mean, yeah, Nick Fury also got it, so. Yeah. I have no Same idea. thing with like Iron Man having it. I guess this is supposed to be leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. Iron Man, but still like leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, I guess that is a somewhat political organization, but like not I really. Like, it's not supposed to, whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't allow the government spending to build all those helicarriers. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I have number one on the team who is uh, very much alluded to being Richard Nixon in comics number one is a hilarious character but the main reason why and for 88 points he he doesn't do you'd think as much for 88 points but it is cool what he does do so he can use shape change is his trait he can use shape change when he does and fails for that attack you increase his defense value by half the result so he's always going to have like a plus one right potentially plus two 
So, because obviously, if you roll five or six, you're you're safe. He only has a 16 defense, though, so it's a 17 or an 18. But with Prez Ricard, it becomes the minimum his defense is going to be is a 19 to potentially a 20 with Prez's uh, 18 defend. So I really like that little combo. He also has a damage power for his first two clicks, which is leadership, outwit, and perplex. So he's got very good uh, support powers. A lot of lot of leadership on this team. Politician theme team makes sense, right? On his very last click, he has a special defense power. Sadly, it is not a stop click. So it's sort of like, a, hey, I pull sneaky on you there. Hopefully you land to it type of deal, which is you give him a double power action. And this will kill him because he does not have willpower. You give him a double power action. He can use pulse wave as a free action. Unless already modified by this effect, hit opposing characters, modify their combat values by negative one for the rest of the game, even when this power is lost. So he's an 11 for one on this click where you can potentially pulse wave, you know, quite a few people give you negative one combat values for the rest of the game. But with this super defense I'm using with Prez and everything, he'll pretty much stay top dial. I would imagine in most games having a 19, whatever defense, and then of course having shape change, stealth mastermind, etc. So it's pretty solid. It's pretty darn good. I, I dig number one. I've always liked playing him. He does have an eight range, so he's a 10 for one. And I did put one enhancement on the team. And I think a little more enhancement, he'd be great. Next up is Dr. Spectrum. This is a dude I love. And I mean, I love playing Dr. Spectrum on teams. Once again, another character eight range. He at least flies. He does not have willpower either, which is a little rough. I messed with like putting the Lex Luthor who can like boom instantly KO a friendly character and then give your whole team willpower. But, you know, maybe in a 500 point game, I would do that. But in 400 points, it's a little iffy, especially being down 50 right away. So Dr. Spectrum is cool. He has power prism. So when he targets a single character with an attack, you increase his attack value by the number of differently colored standard powers on his target style. So except for special ones, because it's not a standard power if it's a special power, obviously. Most of the time, he should have a plus two attack. So he should be a 12 for four running shot pulse wave. Most of the time, potentially a 13 attack, which is awesome. He also has shape change. He does some stuff later on his dial. He can power action, bring out a rock by standard, all this other jazz. But really, that's what you're playing him for. He's just a really solid politician attacker. Next up, I'm playing Regenesis Cyclops at 70 points. He's running shot pen blast. He has a stop click, two clicks in. Very solid. I just really enjoy him, even when he goes down to a nine attack. It's not terrible with all the perplex and everything on this team. He's got range combat expert after his first click. He is stop is stop ESD toughness. He has ESD top dial. He has leadership. If another friendly character hits an opposing character, then you heal Cyclops two clicks, which is, oh, sorry, only one click. My bad. Uh, this is the Utopia version. I'm not supposed to be playing the Utopia version. This is obviously not a Utopia theme team. Anyways, uh, next up to... Oh, sorry. This is not filling out points. We have Lex Luthor from the JLU set. 25 for 50 points. I dig him a lot. The running shot, the special attack power, which he can you know choose pen blast, precision strike, range combat expert, or ignore hindering terrain is awesome. He has the Injustice League trait, which gives your opponent an action token every turn. If you roll that big six, and it's 100 points or less. Mostly, he's got Injustice League, Superman enemy, which is also good. But he has that uh, that enhancement that we need for a lot of other characters, which is just awesome. So it makes Dr. Spectrum a straight up five damage if he's just going to shoot somebody and not pulse wave. It makes number one at least a two damage. It makes Cyclops a four damage with running shot, pen blast. Lexa, there's just very good support for just having the enhancement itself. And then he himself can push that with if I need to, etc. Rounding out the team, 20 points, the Atom. He's, he's, George, he's standing on George Washington's shoulder. He's a little charged, super strength, battle fury figure. Just really solid. You know, He's a tiny with super senses. He's 17 defense. So he's an 18 from range. Adam is just really solid. So yeah, that is my politician theme team. Kind of all over the place. A little bit of synergy here and there. But overall, it's just like characters I want to throw on a team. Characters I enjoy playing. And that will conclude generic gallery. So tell us what your favorite like politician keyworded character is you want to send that into the show whether it's on facebook twitter etc cetera, etc cetera. simeon let's jump into uh community shall we there are dozens of us dozens we need to kind of get going with the show so we need to finish it up so let's go ahead and do community tuesdays let's read our favorite answer for community tuesdays and that will be that will be it that will be it ladies and gentlemen so really quick community tuesdays was what kind of map do you prefer we have maps that have no well there's terrain but like it's not printed on there those are the very early maps 
we have the maps of the skirmish numbers we have the maps with the battleship numbers that's what i decided to call them that's the a through p the one through uh 24 whatever right then there's you know the letters and numbers and then there's the maps without any letters and numbers those i don't care for and now maps that have coordinates in each square that we saw with house of x simeon what style of map do you prefer uh, I actually prefer like the color of like the map over anything else. So I do like the numbers on like the columns and rows indicated in some way, but I don't like them overtaking the map. So I don't like the skirmish or the battleship style maps. To be honest, uh, I just feel like it d clusters up the map and takes away from like the aesthetics. Unless you're playing on like Roll Twenty, where it, the aesthetics already gone completely. Um, yeah, like I, I'd much prefer to see like the trees and bushes and skyscrapers or whatever's hidden on the map, you know, rather than seeing all these like numbers just dotted everywhere, kind of breaks up the like the for flow sure. of it for me. There was most certainly a time where I was playing Skype Hero Clicks and we would use the letters and numbers to call out the exact positions where I would have been, you know, at that moment in time, I would have been crazy excited for these House of X maps. Now, when everybody's playing online, it number one, it doesn't matter when the, sorry, the majority of people are playing online. It doesn't matter because it just doesn't matter because we're not going to see any of the map, no matter how beautifully or elegantly designed, you know it's going to be the graphic designer or whatever. We're not going to see any of that. We're just going to see the terrain and all the boring stuff. And then, you know, even playing in real life, it just looks bad. It looks really clunky. I think it looks awful. I don't care for the skirmish numbers for sure. Uh, they are just terrible. So for sure, my favorite's got to be the A through P, 1 through 24 on the side. That's the best way to do it. I know the first time I got uh, Wakakanda, the AEW, <laughs> AEW, ADW map. Uh, I was like, "Ugh, what is wrong with this thing? It doesn't have any numbers or letters." And so I like I wrote on a sharpie on the map, <laughs> rows and columns where the numbers and letters should be. Yeah, it just bothered me. I hated it. I hated when they did that. I was like, "How dare you? How dare you?" So, go ahead, read your favorite answer on Facebook. All right. First, before I read my favorite answer, I would like to say uh, Edward K said 3D maps, and then he posted a picture of a 3D map. And if you've ever played on 3D maps, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, like physically being able to move your flyer up to like an elevation, like kind of get like a scale of it is kind of cool. Um, surprisingly, it does not yeah. help with line of fire like you would hope it would. But uh, So I'm going to read from somebody that we haven't heard from in my, I don't think I've read any of their answers before. So that is William Kent O'Brien. He says... I like the battleship marks and ideally some relevant representation of hindering elevated and blocking terrain in the meat of the map. I don't like it when a map doesn't offer any of any one type just in case my opponent or I have a character who depends on it for something cool. So like water, like a little bit of everything, like a little water, elevated, uh, hindering, blocking. Um, I know there's a lot of characters like Absorbing Man comes to mind that needs stuff like that. He says, uh, this question makes me nostalgic for the old Square Infinity Challenge maps where there was no indication of what kind of terrain anything was. And then uh, he says, I find the skirmish starting numbers really distracting in regular game, although I do want to play skirmish someday. Seems cool. Uh, spoiler, it's not as great as it seems. It's I'm not going to say skirmish is bad, but it's a very exploitable format, uh, more so than normal hero clicks, which should say something to anyone that's played normal hero clicks in competitive play. Wow. Fantastic. That was both riveting and not at all. Simeon. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, I don't like skirmish Calder. I just don't. I just wanted a really good long awkward. No, I've literally never played it. I've watched other people play it and I'm like, this does not look fun at all being able to uh, reduce very easy to break. Uh, penetrating damage by four no, we're not talking on about one we're not talking it's about just a bad skirmish. Design. we're not talking about skirmish we're not talking about skirmish don't please let's not talk about skirmish bonsai tree and sapling on twitter says honestly anything except the first one the first map 
uh, in the pictures that I mentioned is maps with no terrain. So like the very first maps that came out. Uh, a map needs to have terrain. Everything else will work itself out. King Arthur's Castle is one of my favorite maps ever, ever because the terrain demands to be taken into consideration. Even though it can be super swingy, there's still angles you can work. Yeah, there are maps like that. King Arthur's Castle being probably the most prominent one that I've ever played on, where it's super hard and super difficult to understand good lines of fire, unless you play, obviously, completely outside of the castle. But, like, messing around with it, is really oh, yeah. difficult, way more of, difficult than the new blocking. Doom's castle. Uh, there's the th level three elevation on one side, uh, level two yeah. elevation on the other side. Um, lots of weird lines of fire, for sure. All right, well, that was Community Tuesdays, guys. Thank you so much. We throw up Community Tuesdays question every Tuesday on Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to go ahead and write in your answers there. Let's get into a Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. This is a pretty simple tip. It's more like a real life tip, but not so much an in-game tip. So for tidy travel and storage, uh, for your key clicks peripherals here, a second hand set of poker, uh, these like poker cases, uh, they have dice sized and chip sized containers on the side, obviously poker chips, right? So what, what do we use for action tokens? Nine times out of ten, it's poker chips. So there are very nice rows. There's obviously spots to put your uh, decks of cards in them and then dice in the middle. So you can put your dice there. He uses these like kinder egg things, like the big ones. And he puts like his uh, debris tokens and special markers in those. I think that's cute. I would just maybe rubber band them or keep them loose. And then he keeps his pog chips, 3D objects in there as well. And the wizard, or AKA the line of fire tool for us normal speaking Americans slash human beings. I just love that it's called a wizard so much. Gosh, that's hilarious. I love it. I had it. no idea that that's what they called it. Is it because it whizzes? When well, you apparently. It? I guess so. When you let go of it or whatever, it's the wizard. Yeah, absolutely. So, also this week, guys, so that is the Jedi Legend Hero Clicks tip of the week. Also this week, we asked a few people to. Uh, see if we get any questions for the show. So I didn't know how much we were going to talk about. We have been talking for a while. So I think we're going to rattle out our little uh, ask us anything questions really quickly. Uh, Simeon, if you have them pulled up, the first one is for you. So uh, I'm going to read it. So, and then let's let's have your answer, shall we? Yeah. Do you want to do... Uh, I can't remember 100% what Exothermic's real name is, but... Uh, I guess he's technically in the Alex on Discord. I believe so, yeah. Well he was yeah. on the show. We can so just say Alex should know. M. Yeah. Um, yeah. You should know. You should know. Do you want to okay. do all of his and then all of chances? Or do you want to do yeah, sounds good. and then all of his? Well, it already kind of works in a stair step fashion, doesn't it? So we should we can, probably do it that yeah. way, huh? We can just do it, yeah. 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 Alright, so Exothermic says, Simeon, would you rather fight one tri sentinel? character sized calder or a hundred tri-sentinel figure size so like sized calders so like a hundred six inch knees yeah. or one like building sized me so i've watched enough jojo's bizarre adventure to know that a hundred tiny calders would be a nightmare um like i don't mm. care how strong he is at that scale like getting stabbed with like a bunch of little like pins and like whatever would be terrifying also just like the idea that they could just like form into like a voltron calder would be terrifying so i'm gonna go with one tri sentinel that's calder sized also then i could tell people that i fought a robot even though it would probably destroy me it has six arms and i only have two it's got like three faces so there's no then way to put have, a like, headlock three faces yeah that's so <laughs> i like how that's the part that you can't put in the headlock not the fact that you couldn't get your <laughs> arm around like the diameter of whatever my neck would be at that tall like right sure next up we have chance mccall another another simian question if one had to go simian would it be hero clicks or natter days it would Natter easy. days being Simeon's drink of choice in our WWE Hero Clicks Extreme Rules yeah. video now on YouTube.com slash Dollar Tree. Very easily be Natter days. Uh, I don't tend to stick to one <laughs> beer ever. Um, Natter days are just a night, a nice, like light, refreshing lemon 
like lemonade kind of like beverage for an afternoon while getting hit with chairs. But uh, I, I don't actually drink Natter Days on my typical days. Uh, it was very much only for the camera. So, it, yeah, Natter Days can go. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, you want to read the next two, Simeon? Yeah, so Exothermic asks again, uh, Calder, how do you feel about the first two questions being specifically for Simeon? A little hurt, to be honest with you guys. I guess I'm not important enough to be asked very specific questions, I see. So I am, I am a little offended, a little hurt, but that's okay. That's all right. Simeon deserves uh, some more time in the spotlight it's after true. getting blatantly uh, <laughs> unrecognized in one of his games this week. I feel a bit bad for that. So Simeon deserves it. No, it's okay. Was it, was it George Masu? Is that his name? Uh, any- I think it was. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh- Masesu? Chance, Chance McCall comes back with a little bit more of a jab at me again. He says, why is Simeon's favorite movie, X-Men Origins Wolverine? Of course, being the one where uh, Deadpool is some weird hodgepodge monster thing. Um, it's not. It's not my favorite movie. Uh, my favorite movie is Mood Indigo. Sure? Yes, I'm positive about that. My favorite hero movie is Logan. And then if you want to go into like comic movies then it's men in black, but X-Men origins Wolverine ranks. If I'm going to like cut it into pieces, the pretty first high half of the movie, it's going to be like top five X-Men movies, but that's like X-Men specific. And that's also including the fact that most X-Men movies haven't been amazing. So uh, it's really the ending that kills that one for me, but the rest of it's fine. It really is. Honestly, the underutilization of certain characters like Gambit, et cetera, that are just really like, oh, okay, sure. You know, stuff like that is a little rough, but the beginning is solid, you know, a little X-Force, you know, all that stuff. That's fun. I guess oh, they're not yeah. really, they're like the like X strike team, death whatever squad whatever or whatever. Them, yeah. Strike for Yeah. All right. Next up, Exothermic has a couple of questions here. What is your favorite sculpt on a figure you'd never play? Simeon, you have an answer on this one? Yeah, that's pretty easy for me. It's uh, Thor's Mighty Chariot. It has one point value. It's mm. a two by two. It has one point value, and that's 500 points. Um, if I'm playing a 500 point anything, it's just not going to be something that I reach for. I'm probably going to play with like more figures rather than just a singular one. And if I'm playing like a high point game, again, if I'm already reaching for like a two by two, that I just have so many other two by twos that I prefer over this one and so it's a really cool sculpt i really like having it but i will never ever ever play it Mm. i think mine's got to be the master mold figure like it's really cool he's huge he's in the chair he's like just ginormous same thing with like the um the mole monster from that set like all of the colossals from that set are so massive and huge but i know i'm just never gonna play any of the ones from galactic guardians but they are really just crazy cool humongous uh, yeah. sculpts that master that really actually if you ever get to like run like a boss battle scenario with all the new sentinels that we got out of uh x-men dark phoenix saga uh, that master mold is actually pretty legit now you can like pop in a tri sentinel on its retaliation mm. line like turn one and then all of a sudden you just have a tri sentinel on your team when you didn't before nice actually that's actually pretty solid so yeah no i dig that for sure uh he goes on to say what is the ugliest sculpt you've ever enthusiastically played all right so i've got two answers for this one um purposefully ugly like they designed it to be ugly is pizza face. I really love playing pizza face. I love playing it in high point games. If your opponent like brings out like 12 figures and all of a sudden you just like flood the map with like the little pizza slice pogs. That's really fun. Um, also in like battle Royales, you get to choose which like opponent you pick how many figures they have or whatever. So that one's really fun, really ugly, but I really like playing it. And then, uh, Kang's time toilet for the accidentally ugly, probably one of my least favorite sculpts in the entire game that I've actually used a few times. The only cool thing it does is if your opponent probs an attack, you can then re-prob it. So like if they prob it, 
you just get to automatically prob it again, even if you've already probed. And so if they have like multiple probs and you're within range of their characters, you can just keep re-rolling the dice as long as they're like within your favor. But that, yeah, it is, okay. it nice. is a time toilet. It is an ugly sculpt. Mm. Really gonna gonna poo poo on it like that, huh? Oof, that's rough. That's rough. A bad sculpt that I like to play. That's kind of tough because I have such high standards and class. You know, I guess it would have to be. I don't even want to say the one I was thinking of because it's not even a bad sculpt. So a, a sculpt I think is bad on its own that I play all the time is the Civil War OP kit Captain America because. Iron Man looks fine because he is shooting something out of his repulsors. Captain America is like blocking nothing with his head down, which just looks really like weird when it's not next to the Iron Man. And Iron Man like works fine without being next to that Captain America. But I don't think Captain America works fine in like the same way. So I think like that is a dial I love, love playing all the time. But like I said, it just looks really goofy when that yeah. Iron Man isn't next to it. Like, so much so, Iron Man has to be on the display. I mean, obviously, you know, with all my Captain America figures, I don't just have that Cap sitting by himself. He has to be next to that Iron Man in the pose. Like, that's how they're built. I honestly wish WizKids would do more sculpts like this, where they're very much meant to be put next to each other. But I wish they would also both work without... And that'd be very simple with Captain America just having his, like, head up, you know? And just turn to the side instead. But I think going based off like how the original art was, it was like looking this way. But it's a cool sculpt. It just looks really weird when the when the Iron Man with the blast isn't next to it. You're like he's yeah. you know he's blocking nothing. It's a great sculpt duo to like display. It's uh, yeah. I mean iconic comic series uh, or, like story storyline, I guess. And it's like a very like iconic iconic scene, like so much so that they like recreated it in the movies, and so yeah, it's pretty right decent to put on a shelf. And the last question we have is, what is a terrible keyword that you like to play from Chance McCall? Oh, I didn't even see this one. What's so? It's terrible keyword you like to play. Uh, All right, I got an answer. If you don't have an answer, I can whip it out really quick. Yeah, I'll go ahead and talk about it. You go first. All right. Uh, for me, it's definitely Serpent Society and Great Lakes Avengers. Like those are just Serpent Society is a bad keyword just because we don't get a lot of new figures. And the last time they really divulged into the Serpent Society was four years ago. And even in Superior Foes of Spider Man, they weren't the greatest team to all put together because they all acted pretty much the same. They were a charge person. They all had that same like phasing attack thing, but they're all very close combat based, you know. And it's a little bit of a bummer that when we finally got the rest of the uh, the bad girls, for lack of a better term, Diamondback, Asp, and uh, Black Mamba, that they didn't have the sneak attack trait. Instead had the bad girls ink trait, which is weird because Mamba being in the Spider-Man set doesn't have the bad girls trait. So there was some great foresight there. So it's like, uh, well, half the one third of the bad girls, you know, is missing the bad girls trait, but sure, whatever. So like, Serpent Society is a very goofy keyword. They've sort of been at least sort of keeping up with. We did get a King Cobra. Sorry, not a King Cobra. A Rattler. Sorry, excuse me. Once again, not a Rattler. What is his stupid name in the Captain America? Sidewinder. Sidewinder. Darn it. Darn it. Dang, Sidewinder. Yes. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. Probably because he like isn't around in the comics for much. Someone mostly like what's her face takes Viper takes over the Serpent Society like almost right away. He's a, he is an older gentleman. He's got away with the ladies, though, which is very creepy and weird in the comics when you when you read it. But yeah, Sidewinder's just ancient. He's just like a dude that has teleport cape, and it's like, ah, you have no other skills besides this. Like, you're not even that great of a fighter. You're, uh, I don't know, you're the leader of certain society, I guess. Simeon, you got something? Yeah, so uh, my normal answer for this would be like Alpha Flight, and they're only bad in the fact that they haven't been fully remade recently and so like if you still have like a 400 point build you can still make a decent alpha flight team even like by today's standards for like a casual game uh you probably won't win but you can still do it and have fun um 
but another one that I really like to play and I've had mixed results with is the Runaways. Like, a weird trend that they've done with the Runaways is they'll give us... So, like, in Hammer of Thor, we got, like, the main, like, five people. Chase Stein, Molly Hayes, Carolina Dean, Nico Minoru, and Gertrude Yorks and Old Lace. And then a year later, they gave us Victor Mancha. And then we got the same like crew plus Alex Wilder uh, in Secret Wars Battle World. And then it was like two years later, we finally got another Victor Mancha by himself in another set. So the Runaways are like very split, but um, actually combining the 15th anniversary ones with the Secret Wars Battle World ones, there's so much like synergy in those like teams. Uh, the Gertrude Yorks from or 15th year, 15th anniversary, I think is infinitely better than the battle worlds <laughs> one. It's not like awful. At least, um, the chase Stein has like passenger two, so he can carry. Uh, he also gives, um, what is it? Improved targeting hindering. And then power, an adjacent friendly character can use improved targeting hindering this turn. So he can give that to, like, Carolina Dean, who's actually, like, the better ranged attacker. Uh, There's just, like, a ton of, like, synergy. You do have to play multiple Molly Hayes from the Secret Wars Battle World to really, like, have it work. But, and that's, so it's not, like, comic accurate, but it's She's pretty gnarly. Yeah. For for 25 points. points, she's just... She's still one of my, like, favorite characters. She's so slow, so that's why you need, like, the carry ability to, like, really get her within range. But once you do, yeah, uh, between her and the uh, old lace bystander, you can really pump out some damage on your opponents. Right on. And that will conclude the mailbag for this week. If you guys want to send any questions, feel free to do so. Either message the page on Facebook, shoot us a Twitter DM, or if you are a member of our Patreon, go ahead and put something in the questions tab. It's always fun to answer questions. I enjoy answering them. I know Simeon does too. Hopefully you guys enjoy listening to them somewhat anyways. As it is near the end of the show, I'm going to do all my cool plugs just so you know, guys, as far as Patreon rewards go, I'm going to wait a little while before they go out. I needed to buy more tokens because I'm missing about uh, all of them that need to go out this month. So I had to buy an order. Thank you for my foresight. When I realized that I was still missing tokens for a certain gentleman on our Patreon who did not get their tokens last month, I'm getting it figured out. I just had to wait to get a few more PayPal dollars because I sure do hate using my actual bank account money for that. It's like I should just be better at keeping my PayPal balance. Eh, it's, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. Don't buy Heroclix on eBay. I buy. Ugh, it's bad. Don't use eBay, even if it's even if you like it. Just don't. Just delete it off your phone. It's it's a it's a cesspool of spending money. But what you're if wake up at four a.m. No, because you'll Phoenix. It doesn't matter because you'll wake up at four a.m. You'll be like, oh, I don't have any Nick Fury. That's only fifty dollars with twenty dollars shipping. I'll buy a seven seventy dollars of Nick Fury Agents of Shield at four a.m. and then buy an Avengers Assemble brick as well. Spoiler alert: you can see those unboxings soon on our YouTube channel. A dial H for hero clicks. Type that into YouTube. You'll find us right away. Check out our Thursday Throwdown weekly series where we started from Infinity Challenge and we're working our way through all of the main hero click sets. And me and Simeon are going head to head using your votes for what you guys want us to play from those sets. This week, Simeon is building out of Civil War and I'm building out of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, Civil War, we had to do because it is a main booster set, right? TMNT is going to be the first time we're using a gravity feed set. But I think this works well. We'll probably skip most gravity feeds after this, since that's what we've been doing. But because uh, Civil War would have had to go against either Superior Foes of Spider-Man or Uncanny X-Men, would that would have just slaughtered yeah. Civil War. It's just not fair. So TMNT and Civil War, I think, are very much more balanced for having a lower character selection and just overall just being better, you know, like being more well fitted for each other. Uncanny X Men versus Spear Force of Spider Man is going to be the week after this, and I think that's going to be fine. You know, there's no clear winner there, which is nice. So, you know, it's like sets like that where we're like, yeah, technically going on our booster set, how everything should work, but nah, we can't. We can't just slaughter somebody by giving them Civil War against Uncanny X Men. It's just not right. So, 
definitely check out those videos on our YouTube channel, our unboxings. All of our podcasts are also on our YouTube channel. If you ever just want to chill out at your computer at home and listen to your podcast, go for it. As you guys know, you can find the podcast anywhere. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, blah, 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 blah. Pretty much anywhere podcasts are found. And of course, check out our Facebook and Twitter. If you haven't, just go like and just go follow our Twitter page and leave us a review on whatever podcast uh, app you use because that really helps us out. It really helps us grow as a podcast. And I know you guys enjoy listening, or at least some of you enjoy listening. And you're probably like, man, I want to talk about this podcast to other people. I sure wish more people would listen to it. So leaving a review and obviously liking our Twitter, subscribing to our YouTube channel or liking our Twitter, liking our Facebook, subscribing to our YouTube channel, and then following our Twitter just helps us grow, uh, gives us a better platform and everything helps us stay uh, just really active, more active in the community. So and we really appreciate everybody that has already liked and followed and subscribed on all of our platforms. So thank you guys so much. That is all I have to say, Simeon. Why don't you go ahead, wrap up the show. Yeah. No, Facebook is the only place yeah. where you're able to see me make my, my snide remarks. And speaking of snide remarks, Billion Dollar Bruce may be brewing up a tournament circuit to battle out the gross popper. That's right. So keep it tuned for some announcements about the, the Prince format that will be coming Ooh. out potentially. Ooh, uh, huh? But if you, liked, uh, if you liked listening and you liked the teams that we built... Well, you know where you can find some good politician figures that we listed off and we talked about? You can find those at CoolStuffInc.com. Ooh, wow. Bet you didn't know that. Well, you do now. You can use code DIAL5 to get 5% off. And the more you buy, the more you save. You can rack up those discounts on singles pretty quick. I'm already up to like 9% discount on singles. And I've only spent $1 million because I'm Billion Dollar Bruce. But, uh, yeah. If you want the newest sealed and singles on the market, check out CoolStuffInc.com. As always, guys, happy trails.